Anti-mass protesters hit the streets of Florida as COVID-19 cases surge to a new high in the state. The issue of masks has become highly politicized in the U.S. Opponents say having to wear them encroaches on their personal freedom. You want to call me selfish for not wearing a mask? I want to say to you, yes, all the Rachel, people calling me selfish, you're the one who's trying to yes. force me a medical procedure so they you did. can feel more That's safe. Governor Ron DeSantis has not made wearing masks mandatory. It's up to local authorities to decide whether to do that. And despite the spike in Florida, not all cities have made masks compulsory. We shouldn't be required to. We do enough for our health to support our immune system. The bottom line is that a government is there to protect our rights. They're not there to tell us how to live our life and how to uh, be healthy, basically. Protests like this aren't only limited to Florida. There have been demonstrations against masks and lockdown measures in more than half of the 50 U.S. states. Over the weekend, President Donald Trump was seen wearing a mask in public for the first time during a visit to a military hospital. He'd previously cast doubt on whether masks were useful and said repeatedly he wouldn't wear one. Federal health officials have been pleading with the public to take proper precautions against the virus, but they've stopped short of implementing a nationwide mask requirement. Let's do what we know really works. Uh, like I said, uh, avoid bars because they really do spread. Restaurant capacity down 50 percent, hand hygiene, and please wear a mask in public. That is really, really, really important. We've got to have 90 or 95 uh, percent adherence to that. Florida's skyrocketing cases coincide with the reopening of the Walt Disney World theme park in Orlando, which was closed for four months. Visitors to what's advertised as the happiest place on Earth now have to wear masks and adhere to other safety measures. Schools are set to reopen, too, despite concerns from teachers and parents that it's too soon. Florida's Education Department says there are no plans to postpone the start of the school year in August. The state's outbreak has yet to hit its peak. Health officials expect cases to rise further in the next two weeks. More than 40 hospitals' intensive care units are already at full capacity, and overwhelmed health care workers are warning that hospitals could be headed for disaster. Natasha Hussein, TRT World. For more on this, let's go to Eric Feigelding in Washington, D.C. He's an epidemiologist and health economist at the Harvard Chan School of Public Health. He's also a senior fellow at the Federation of American Scientists. Welcome back to Money Talks, Doctor. Now, as we heard, Florida has recorded the highest ever single daily caseload of new infections for any U.S. state since the pandemic began. And we're seeing this surge rage across southern and western states. Tell us what's happening right now. Why are we seeing this wave of infections across the country? Yeah, the wave of infections is because of really poor leadership at the federal level, at the state level, and in many ways at the local levels, because Florida still has not uh, put down any lockdowns ever since they reopened, despite this high surge. They reopened too quickly. They do not have any mask mandates. Um, and altogether, uh, Florida has just been very derelict in its actions. And seeing as the reopening of Disney World is just one clear example that Florida is not taking this seriously. It is incredible that a place like Disney World, which will have thousands of visitors on a daily basis, has reopened. Why is it that the governor, DeSantis, seems to refuse to acknowledge that tougher measures need to be put in place in his state? I think um, Governor Ron DeSantis has kind of, you know, a loyalty to Trump. He's one of Trump's most loyal governors. And so when there's top down leadership that's saying that this is not a big deal and dismissing it and resisting masks for so long. That's what obviously DeSantis follows. And DeSantis has actually muzzled uh, and fired one of their dashboard reporting uh, staffers for reporting the actual data and refusing to scrub it. And so that is just a clear, clear example of many, many wrongs in the state. And some of the reporting is also delayed three weeks. It's just very poor public health management at this stage.
So what do authorities in these hard-hit states like Florida, Arizona, California, what do they need to do, in your view? Do they have to return to lockdown measures, which, which as we'll know, will inevitably hurt the economy? Well, I think lockdown measures is the last resort, but may be required as this thing is getting way too heated. I think at minimum, mask mandates would be really, really important for this. But yet mask mandates are not on the table right now in Arizona, in Texas, or Florida. And that is very, very upsetting. Without that, then you have to go into lockdowns. And how early you should have done it also makes a huge difference. Right now, we're doing it as the wildfire is burning out of control. It will just take a lot more longer time to get this under control. And instead of addressing this out-of-control situation, as you put it, in places like Florida and Arizona, we have the White House, uh, which seems bent on really undermining and discrediting Dr. Anthony Fauci, the man who's been uh, the top infectious disease expert in the US literally for decades. Why is the Trump administration doing this? Is Dr. Fauci simply being punished for telling the truth? Yeah, they're trying to undermine Fauci because Fauci's public health message and science message is directly undermining their policy. They're trying to force schools to reopen. Fauci says, be careful, let's wait. Uh, they say, uh, you know, real, you know, we don't need lockdowns, we don't need masks. Fauci has countered them at every turn right now in the recent times. And altogether, it they do not want this voice of reason to go against their political agenda. And that's why they're trying to basically run him under the bus. Okay, Dr. Eric Feigl-Ding in Washington, D.C., thank you again for joining us on the program.